Hey, it's Devin, and this is the Youngbloods. What is going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. It's another day. It has gotten cool, just so everybody knows. It has cooled off. It is, I think tomorrow's high is supposed to be like 49 degrees, which is, honestly, it's kind of crazy, the fact that we have uh, cold weather finally hitting us. I mean, it, it is to be expected, so don't get me wrong. The weather is supposed to be here, supposed to get cold. It's, we, are, we are well into October. Um, the mountains just got a little dusting on the top of the, of the mountain with uh, some snow. Um, I was looking at the Instagram of Snow Basin. That's up close to where my daughter lives, and, and I'm seeing snow up there. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's finally hitting us now. It's finally getting colder. Now, I have done something, and my wife doesn't necessarily like it. I have... Uh, had the windows open in the house, and the house is actually kind of cold, but I got me a little sweatshirt on, so it's okay. I'll be okay. She'll be okay too. Um, we got blankets. We're good. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to cool the house off, and I don't want to heat the house off unless it's free. I know that's a dad thing to say, but why would I want to spend the money when I can just let it happen on its own naturally? I mean, I don't. I don't want to spend any money uh, heating and cooling in the house if I don't have to. Yes, again, that is a dad thing to say, and I'm totally behind it, and I can, I can agree with that. I have no, I have no problem saying that. That's easy, but <laughs> you know, the reality when it comes to uh, heating and cooling houses, I mean, I, I, I saw our power bill last month. Oh my gosh, why are we paying these bills? This is, this is ridiculous. It makes no sense to me, and the fact that I that we do it, and we're like, oh, no big deal. This is fine. It is a big deal. I mean, I'd, I would rather st- give my money to someone else who really needs my money than some corporation. Anyway, that being said, here we are again. We're back together again. Everybody's just kind of hanging out, talking and listening. And I've got a bunch of emails. I'm scrolling down to where it was. I refreshed this page and I should not have. I need to find a better way to organize these things. Um I have done organize it in one way, so I'm so being that I'm going live every day um, for a while until I deem necessary to not go live anymore. Um, I figured I'm going to do like stuff that has to do with faith based stuff, you know, faith questions, religious questions, all that stuff. I'm going to do those on Sunday. Um, I got one uh, actually texted to my uh, to the phone number that I offer, so if anybody wants to call in, if you if you feel like you want to call in and you want to and you want to uh, let people hear your voice of your question. Perfectly fine. You can call in the number. The number is 615-624-4141. You can call in. You can uh, leave a message. And I'll play your message. And then I'll respond to you, to your message, on the live. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, the, the reality is, is like, you know, it, it, I, I, I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate all the emails. I got, got another one. And the one that came in yesterday that, that stuck out, I'll say the one that came in stuck out was a text message, which I don't get too many text messages and on to that phone number, but it came in a text message and it, it, it's a good one. It's an interesting one. And I am 100% sure going to answer that. And that'll answer that one on Sunday, pretty much at four o'clock. So there's that. So anyway, it's time to start time to get this thing going time to get the thing, the, everything rolling when it comes to uh, all the emails I've downloaded a few of them and some of them are doozies and some of them are kind of funny and some of them are, you know, make, make, make me laugh. I don't know if they'll make you laugh, but it's like just internally. I'm like, really, why do people really have these kind of problems? So I guess they do. And so if they have the problem, I guess I'm here to answer it. So here we go. Hey, Devin, my partner and I have been living together for almost two years and I feel like I'm the only one doing any of the household chores. I'm constantly cleaning, doing laundry and tidying up while they seem to be be doing the bare minimum. I don't want to nag or turn into the house police, but I'm starting to resent how even the, the workload is. How do you, to, how do I get them to step up without get, uh, turning every uh, every little thing into an argument? Simple, very simple. This is probably the simplest thing I could ever explain to anyone. You know, my mom. Um, oh, there goes there. Goes, oh, here, my mom dropped the phone. I was moving it. Um, my mom, <laughs> my mom was amazing. Okay. My, my mom would, okay. There, there, I'm number six of seven kids and growing up, I don't remember all my siblings being in the house at one time. I do remember a good bit of us in the house. I do remember like 
my barely remember my sister being in the house. She was the second oldest, but I do remember from like my my oh, excuse me, my brother Jeff all the way down to obviously me and my little brother. So we I can say there was easily five kids in the house. The the most memory memories I have. And when you have five kids in the house and you have your, your mom and you have your dad, there's seven people in the house. I remember my mom very vividly going on strike. My mom, remember her saying out loud to everyone, I am no longer doing this. You guys can't help out. I am going on strike. You're cooking, you're cleaning, you're doing everything yourself. It is up to you. That is what's going to happen. There is no, uh, there's no other way around it. You have to fend for yourself because I'm tired of doing it all because no one lends a hand. Now, I understand her thinking because there were seven people in the house. And if seven people can't help out just a little bit, do just the bare, a little bit more than the bare minimum, then yeah, go on strike. And you know, I support that. So, and if, if you're, you're, <laughs> you and your boyfriend have been uh, living together and he's doing bare minimum, first of all, you need to go and you need to have, you need to have, okay, th- nothing's going to change. If you just, if you, you guys decide to take the next step and go from, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, and you're moving from boyfriend, girlfriend to, you know, of course you're living together, so you're pretty much doing the married stuff. But if you go from decide to make it married, nothing's going to change. Excuse me. Nothing. Seriously, nothing's going to change. So you got to make a big deal out of this. You need to make it a big deal. And if they, it turns into an argument, then honestly, it's he's not the right one. Seriously. I know. I get it. He's, his excuse is I go to work. I have things I get to do, and I'm tired. I just finished up with a 12-hour shift. You don't know how it feels. You just work an eight-hour shift. (laughs) If that's his excuse, be done with the guy. Now, obviously, you don't want to be done with the guy. You want to try to save the whole thing and make it work out and, and make it where there's no argument. When it comes to house chores, I can tell you, um, my wife and I, I, there are days that I do more, and there's days that she, she does, that she does more. There's days that I cook. There's days that she cooks. There are days that we cook. It, 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 you know, when it comes to keeping up a house and doing all the daily stuff, everybody's got to chip in. And if you if you're allowing him to do nothing, or you're allowing uh, him to just kind of get by with a bare minimum, what's going to happen if you get if you guys start having children? Who's going to be changing all the diapers? I'm going to tell you, it's going to be you. Who's going to be doing all the feeding? Well, I mean, if you're breastfeeding and when they're when they're younger, that it's going to be just you. You got to light a fire underneath this guy. You got to make him do some do the things that he has no clue, no idea, not even wanting to do. Seriously, he's gotten very complacent. And you know that's that's what happens a lot of times though, and I think it goes both ways when it comes to in any relationship, any marriage, whatever. We get very comfortable. We get very comfortable with who we're, who we're with, and we kind of let certain things slide and things like that. And you're like, well, you know, it'll take care of itself, or we can take care of those dishes later. I myself, okay, because I'm a product of uh, EB and Sandy Youngblood, and my mom was she was a little OCD. I mean, when I say a little, I mean a lot. The house was always clean. The house was always spotless. You could eat off the floors of my house growing up. Sadly, I'm a little bit that way. I don't like I don't like messes. I don't like disarray. Everything's got a spot. If I don't use it, I get rid of it. I hate I hate stuff. Now, my parents, because they grew up with nothing, they they uh, they always had stuff and sometimes too much stuff, and that I think that that causes another burden for people out there. But in general. I don't like stuff and I don't want to deal with stuff. I don't want to ha- see it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to, I don't want anything to do with stuff. So, and so, but when it comes to keeping a house clean, Oh, I like a house clean. And my wife knows that. And then, and, and I, it's not meaning that I don't mean that in the way that, Hey, she knows that she's going to take care of it. I'm meaning she knows that. And she knows that I'm going to do it too. She knows that we're, we will clean the house together. We will get, we will assign the kids. Now that's the other thing. You assign when you have kids, especially when they as they get older, and 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 for the most part, when they are teenagers, they are one hundred percent 
and you should start way before they're teenagers, but you are 100% obligated as a parent to make your kids do chores. There is no freeloading. So they need to work. You teach them to work. You teach them to clean. They're going to be, they're going to be amazing in the future. If, if you want to change your life, make a bed. I heard a, a talk about that, and it's true. You change your life, you make your bed. It, it's, it, there's no better statement than that. If you, if, you, if you make your bed daily, your life changes because you, you, it sets an idea and a precedence for the day. So anyway, but I mean, honestly, to go back to your problem, the reality, you're, 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 as, you, as you called yourself, the exhausted maid, it's going to be an argument. It doesn't have to be. You can have a discussion. You can be kind about it. And you can say, I expect you to do more. This, uh, this house is our house. And that doesn't mean it's a singular person taking care of our house. And our house means it's ours. We do it together. So do it together. Honestly, that's what it takes. You have to do it together. And if you don't do it together, then you're going to be left out. And you're going to be doing all of it. You're going to be left out of doing the stuff that he's doing. You know, and if, if he, you know, I get that he's going to have the excuse of it's been a tough day. Well, your day's been tough too. Simple as that. So make him do something, get him up, get him out of the room and have him take care of things. It's plain and simple. Anyway. Hey, Devin, I have a hard, I have, I have a hard time saying no to people and it's starting to take a toll on me. Whether it's all work with the, with friends, whether it's all work with friends or with family, I'm always the one who says yes to everything, covering extra shifts, helping with uh, projects, or being there for everyone's problems. I want to be helpful, but it's I'm burning out. The worst part is I feel guilty whether whenever I'm I even think about saying no. How do I start setting boundaries without feeling like I'm letting everyone down? Simple. Say no. I mean, really, say no. The problem is, the problem is here, you're trying to be a people pleaser, and you are being a people pleaser, and you're making sure that everybody is covered. You're making sure that everybody's got everything they need, and everybody's going to be happy, and you're in, and you're, you're, you're um, trying to, you're, you're feeding an, a beast that can't, that is set up for epic failure. And when I say that, I mean it in the nicest way, but you're, you're, you're setting yourself up to literally, like you said, burnout, but you're not going to just get burnout, but you're going to get angry. You can't be the yes man. It is impossible. You shouldn't do it. Not everybody needs to do it. Not everybody should, no one should ever be there in their, in their life. They need every, you get, there's nothing wrong with helping people. There's nothing wrong with being there for people's problems. There's nothing wrong with the, being the first to volunteer to help the, take care of stuff. Serving other people is amazing. It, it, it make, if we serve other people and we help them without any question and without any thinking we're going to get something out of it, our lives are good. They are. We, we have a better grounding in, in um, you know, community. We have a better grounding in, in honestly, the simple, simple little things of faith in our life. There's a lot of things that helping people out can be, but doing too much can tear you apart just as much as, uh, you know, is not doing anything. You're gonna, you're gonna just, as you said, you're gonna be burnt out completely, and you're, you're, you're a people pleaser who, and you, you got to stop. That is detrimental to your, to your health. So, you got it. How do you start? You just start by saying no. Simple as that. You get, you start by just saying, I can't do it today. That's what you do. And you know, it's, it's, it, and don't feel guilty. Because honestly, the people come to you all the time because they know you're going to say yes. And they should feel a little guilty for the fact that they ask you all the time. Now, it is nice to know that you have that people have someone that they can depend on. Because being, being able to have someone to depend on is amazing. Have someone there who's going to help you out is always, they're always there. I mean, that's my wife. My wife does that for me. I can ask her for, uh, for help for anything, and she's in on it. She takes care of me. It's done, and life is good. But that's my wife, and I do the same thing for her. The problem is you are doing this for everybody. Nothing wrong with being a shoulder to cry on. Nothing wrong with any of that stuff. 
But there comes a point when you have to, you know, step back and say, I need to take some time for me and do it. Just don't feel guilty. There's nothing to feel guilty about. Do you, if you're, if you're put, you're probably putting in more help than most other people do anyway. So just do it. Step out and say no. Sometimes it is perfectly fine to say no. If you say no, guess what? Then say next, next time say yes. Perfectly fine. How many people have told you no? Think about it. Probably a lot. You got to cover your basis. You got to be, do things that are safe for yourself. It'll work out. Okay. Hey, Devin. I love my partner, but they seem to borrow, seem to keep borrowing money from me. And I'm starting to, and it's starting to make me uncomfortable. At first, it was small amounts, like covering lunch or gas. But now they're asking for large amounts to help with bills and other expenses. I'm not sure how to say no without making things awkward between us. I don't know. I don't want to feel like I'm their personal bank account, but I also don't want to come across as selfish. How do I handle this situation without hurting our relationship? <sighs> you know, the thing is, when it comes to uh, finances, you guys obviously are together. You're probably not, obviously, you're not living together because if you're living together, then you'd, you'd, the bills will be just equal, whatever. Um, if you were married, you would be, you'd have the bills covered together anyway. You, what you got to do, <laughs> first you need to do is find out where the money's going. Simple as that. Why is there not enough money? Um, now, did they take a pay cut? Did they lose their job? I mean, these are all things. These, these are all factors. I mean, I'm I'm all for helping people who, when they have lost their job, to make sure they get their basics covered. I have no problem doing that. My wife and I, we've done that for uh, people before, for even family members and things like that. When they were in, uh, were down and out and didn't have anything, we get, we took them food and money and we took care of it. And we never asked for a dime in return. Now, but the thing is, if you have people taking advantage of you, like this is this is someone taking advantage of you, they don't have a, the, you, what's happened is you've become a bank. And... It shouldn't be that way. So figure out what it is. They're probably, you know, financed beyond their means. They probably keep, you know, they, they keep buying stuff that they don't need. They keep, uh, you know, their, their, their financial lifestyle is not equal to where it should be. They, they have, they have a more expensive lifestyle than their pocket and their bank account will let them allow them to have. That's usually the problem. So in a nice way, Ask them if you can help them figure out a budget because most people don't even know what a budget is. Ask them if you can help them figure out a budget because you can say, I need, I'm trying to save money for future stuff and I can't really just keep paying, giving, giving you money to pay all your bills and things like that. And, and it will be awkward. Thing is, if, as long as, as long as you've let it go on, that's how long, how, that's how awkward it's going to be because you're eventually going to have to say no. And you know, and, and to say no, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt anything to say no. I mean, it. it <laughs> I needed a couple of dollars the other day, um, because I paid some bills and things like that. And my wife got paid. I knew she gets paid. I never asked for my wife money, but I needed a couple of dollars. I'm like, hey, I need to get this. Need to get some stuff. Can I? Can I have a, like twenty five, thirty bucks? She's like, yeah, I don't care. She goes, it's, it's our money. I said, no, that was actually your money, because you know what we have. We have a. Bank, our bank accounts, we have three, we have multiple bank accounts. We have my bank account, we have her bank account, and we have our bank account, and then we have savings, and we have other stuff. And I don't pull anything out of savings without letting her know. And I'd rather not pull anything out of savings because savings is, is there for what that reason is. It is called savings, so therefore we save. Um, and what I needed was not trivial, nothing major. And, and I probably could have lived without it, and that's fine. But so, but because I, I had spent some money on uh, some stuff, I had some stuff that came up that was not not expected, that are my bills. I do have my own bills. Um, I asked for a few. I asked for a few dollars, and she's like, "No problem." So that's the thing. If it's every now and then, it's not an issue. But if they're doing it all the time, they have a financial issue. And they, what they're doing is they're they're it, it, here, okay. Here's the problem with borrowing money. Okay, unless you have a good business or good reasons to borrow money, you don't need to borrow money. 
I know there's a lot of financial gurus out there that say, hey, if you're not living off of debt, you're not living. Meaning debt makes you money and debt and, and covers your taxes and all this other stuff. And there, yes, that is a thing. And it is a thing. But if you're borrowing, if you're basically what they used to call the old saying, called, what's called uh, uh, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Meaning you're borrowing from money over here to give it over here to have to give it back over here. It, it just goes full circle and it's, it's like next to impossible to, to keep up with. That's what's happening. That's literally what our federal government does. That's how we, that's why we are trillions of dollars in debt in our, for our country. And so that being said, we got to do, you, we can't do that fine. If, if we did that fi- way, if we handled our finances, like our federal government handled finances, then we're bound to be screwed over. We will not survive. So for your partner to be borrowing money all the time, you need to jump in and you, and you need to suggest some financial classes. Um, even you can take it with them. Because I mean, more financial, uh, you know, uh, more you more you know about finances, the better you will be. That's the reality. Now, if you if you can handle these discussions without an argument, thing is, okay, nothing has to ever be an argument if you're willing to talk, if you're willing to have a discussion. And you're willing to not raise your voice. You're willing to listen. The key thing when it comes to, to having a discussion is you have to admit, both parties have to acknowledge that there is things important things that need to be said. And people, everybody's got their, their own personal thoughts and feelings. And they need to be acknowledged. But then there is a right way to doing some things. And if you're doing it, and you, and you also have to be humble about it and be willing to say, okay, I may be wrong on this matter. So that's why you got to have some humility. So figure that one out. You got to talk to them. You got to get it. You remind me of, of my old counselor. I don't know why, but you do. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I hope it's a good thing. But yeah, I mean, finances can be tough, but you can work it out anyway. All right, what else do we got? All I am is just a dad giving advice. It's good. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, it, it's a. I'm just a dad that gives advice. It's, it's kind of something that that I started doing on the podcast uh, lately, and because it's it's a, honestly it's fairly easy. Um, I do have to do some research, but not as much research as I used to have to do. Uh, but this is it's nice. It's kind of good. So, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I was hoping it was going to be a good thing. So anyway. Um, hey, Devin, I've always struggled with body image. Oh, here we go. This is going to be a fun one. Hey, Devin, I've always struggled with body image, but uh, lately have it's been worse than ever. I'm constantly comparing myself to others, whether it's on social media or in real life, and I feel like I'm never good enough. I've tried to focus on being healthy, but it's hard to ignore that voice inside the the head telling me, I need to lose more weight or change the way I look. How do I stop obsessing over my body and start feeling good about myself again? Okay, body image. Oh my gosh, this is a hard one. I struggle with this myself. Um, when and I and I say this because part of it is you know when we had our first child, um, my wife gained forty five pounds and so did I. Well, during that forty five pounds, my wife had she it, it was pretty much mostly baby. Now, the baby was not 45 pounds, water weight, all this other stuff. I get it. But once she had the baby, baby's gone, baby. Was, and then my wife dropped weight like no other. I unfortunately did not. So I struggle with that. And I have for a long time. Actually, when I was in my 30s, I was the largest I ever have been. Um, now that I'm in my 40s, well, should I say 46, I am now, because I want to feel better. I And my, mine is not necessarily, okay. I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to lie. Yes. I want to look good naked again, plain and simple. That's the reality. That being said though, I also want to feel good. So I've learned by doing certain things that I can eliminate blood pressure medicine, which is awesome. So I'm, I'm eliminating that. Also, I've learned that if I should, if I eat right, I feel better. Well, that's amazing. And I also understand if I eat right, I lose weight. Well, even better. Now, it's not starving myself, but I do eat things that are that make sure that I am I feel full. And 
honestly, I eat everything that I want and I lose weight. So there's that. I'm not going to pimp out any, any diet program. I don't do anything like that. Cause I don't think that's right. All I can say is do your research. The problem that you're having though, is thinking that you're too, that you're overweight all the time. You're probably not. Okay. You didn't, you didn't send a picture, which I didn't, I don't need a picture of what you look like. The reality is this. There is healthy weights and there are unhealthy weights. If you're eating crap all the time, you're going to be unhealthy. And you know, I I saw this video once and, and um, it shows these, these two ladies are in this doctor's office and they were very large and they're like, they don't, he asked them if they, how much water they drink in a day. They're like, Oh, we don't drink any water. We drink soda. And that's all they drink. And these are very large women. And they're saying, they say, well, we drink, we we drink uh, diet soda. So it's okay. It's not okay, right? There's healthy and there's not healthy. What you have, though, is a mental issue with it because at some point in your life, you, and well, even on, as you say about social media, you keep comparing yourself to others, okay? Comparison is the killer of everything. It's the killer of, of life, the killer of personality. It's the killer of uh, ev- literally everything. There, so... You, you, you honestly get rid of social media. If you, if that's what you keep doing, you only drink water and no soda. I've always been drinking. I've always been drinking water since I was born. Your water is, well, I mean, my, this is my, this is me. This is my water. Um, <laughs> water's probably the best thing for you. Actually, we had a, uh, we had a, um, my, my old pediatrician, which was my, my dad's pediatrician. This is funny. My dad's pediatrician, my pediatrician, and was my oldest daughter's pediatrician until Dr. Denmark died. Dr. Denmark was probably the smartest doctors I've ever had the pleasure of meeting in my life. And she said, mammals, it's actually in one of her books uh, um, that she wrote, Dr. Lilia Denmark. Go find that book. Any book by her is amazing. And she, um, from, from Atlanta, Georgia, or lives in, lived in Atlanta, Georgia. She uh, would, uh, doctor visits were $8. Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter what was going on. You show up, you have $8. First come, first serve. Um, but she said, we're, mammals, humans, humans are the only mammal that do not ever wean ourselves. We drink milk all the time. We also drink uh, um, all the, uh, um, what do you call it, or the juices and things like that all the time. And we pretend it's good for us but it is definitely not. So she says the only thing we should ever drink is water. So you got, you got that down pat to the, to the T waters, what you should be drinking. Um, as far as getting past the mental part of it all, honestly, you, you need to, whatever you're looking on social media, I know you're probably not going to delete social media. You got to get past that part. Meaning maybe stop following some of those. Only follow the ones that actually will help you improve, right? Ones that's not going to compare. And you got to stop, do, stop doing uh, body comparison because everybody's body is sl- is a little bit different. And you know, we have there are aspects about each body that are all the same. There are certain things that all of us should be eating. There are certain things that all of us should be drinking, which is mainly water. But the, you know, you got the, the the body comparison has to stop. It is detrimental to you, to your mentality, your, every, everything about you. You're, you, the reality is you're probably never going to stop obsess over your, st- obsessing over your body. But th- what you need to do is as long as your your body's taking in the right stuff, you're getting enough of the right foods. I'm not going to say the right calories because honestly, I think the caloric intake thing is kind of off too. But that being said, there is something to it. And, and you, honestly, you can't you can lose weight if you keep track of the numbers. If you're really diligent on that, you can lose weight doing that. But you, you we're not talking about losing weight. You, I, you know, I need to, I'm going to go look up your Instagram. I got, I know who you are. I'm going to look at your Instagram and I'm going to, I'm going to refer you to probably one of my doctor friends and maybe have them reach out to you because what you have is a, um, is a, is a mental block because our society wants everything to look perfect. And we, and we think everything is perfect because the reality is you're, you're probably most likely fine. I'm dead serious. Don't let the small insecurities about yourself tear you down and make you feel like that you're not where you need to be. Okay. It is okay to have that cheeseburger. It is okay to, to do that every now and then. Okay. 
No, you don't have to eat celery all the time. Don't obsess about it. Should you be active in exercising? Absolutely. Do you need to be eat, eating correct? Yes. But you got to be careful to not to overthink it to it where it gets to to the point where it's going to hurt you. Just try try to try to do better. Try to try to uh, not you know, honestly delete the accounts that you're comparing yourself to. Don't even go at them. Don't even look at them. That will help. This I mean this one's a, I'm a fish out of water when it comes to this one because on I mean this was this is definitely a hard one. I mean this is one of the things that, that even kids these days, teenagers, they struggle with like no other. The key thing is you just got to know that you, you got to be happy and you got to know that people love you. Anyway. Hey Devin, I love my friends, but they have terrible habit of being late to everything. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. I'm talking always showing up at least 20 to 30 minutes late to every hangout, dinner, or event. I'm the type of person who likes to be on time and is driving me crazy waiting around for them all the time. I don't want to be that person who nags about punctuality, but I also don't want to keep feeling disrespected. How do I get them to show up on time without sounding like a control freak? <laughs> Okay, you can't unless you do some trickery here. Okay, <laughs> but I'll, I'll say it as a person who, if I'm not 15 minutes early, then I'm feel like I'm 30 minutes late. That's as I'm, I'm with you in that side. I despise being late to anything. It drives me crazy. Okay, but that's the OCD of me. Okay, I get it. Now. The only trickery you can do is if you know that your guys are going to show up to an event or whatever, you tell them the wrong time. Okay. Tell them the wrong time. And then you get there at the wrong time also. So if it starts at eight o'clock, tell them at seven 30 and you show up at seven 30 and they're there at seven 30. And guess what? You guys are good. Seriously. I mean, it, it, it is very, honestly, it's, it's, it's extremely rude when people are late and they uh, just, just, and they, especially when they do it all the time. Um, we have a, we, I have a brother and we, we've always called it PST is Patrick standard time. And PST is, um, is what it is. Typically PST time is about 15 to 20 minutes late. It's true. Now, the older he's gotten, the better he's gotten at that. But when, like when he was younger and younger married and things like that, it was always PST. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, um, here here in Utah, we call it, you know, you have Mountain Standard Time, which is MST. But a lot of people call it here Mormon Standard Time. And typically that that, that is about 15 to 20 minutes late, too. It's just rude. If it, if you have something that starts at 8 o'clock, you start at 8 o'clock. You don't start at, at 8.30 just because that's when people show up. You started on time, and if they miss out on it, that's all, that's on to them. That you know that that sucks to be them, but that is what that is. You can't fix that. Honestly, you you you, you can't control your friends. There's nothing unless you can, you can talk to them and say, "Hey, I need you guys to be here on time. Please be here on time. Please, please, please be on time." And you can kind of make it a a, a, a uh, on, ongoing joke, but it, it, you can't. You're not going to be able to change it unless they decide to fix it themselves. And that just then to fix it themselves would require them to, you know, deviate from their normal routine. You know, they're, 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 they'll have to be less lackadaisical when it comes to time. So, time is hard. Things like this aren't make it. You, you you just can't control your friends. <laughs> as sad as it sounds, you can't. And but you don't need to take offense at it because to understand that that's just what they are going to do and how they're going to do it. And that you can't change it. Seriously. Don't worry about it. It will be okay. It will work out. Lighten up a little bit. Let them do what they can do. And just, you know, you can ask them. The thing is, you can ask them a couple times. And if they follow through and they are on time, but, and they're, but, and then they're, then they're not. Don't be mad. People are people. And you can't change the things that some people do. 
if they if some if people want to change things, they change it in themselves. They don't do it because you asked them to. They do it because they felt like they should change. So there you go. Hey Devin, my partner has been talking about wanting to move in, move to the city for a fresh start. But I'm really happy where we where we are. I've got a good job, friends, family close by, and I don't want don't feel the need for a big big change. I know it's important to them, but I'm torn because I don't want to uproot my life for something I'm not sure I even want. How do we find a compromise without one of us resenting the other? Moving's hard, okay. It it really comes down to the situation. What do you what do you what are the, what what is going? So, this is your partner. I'm I'm. I wish it was, people would be more specific. But with your with your partner, you okay. <laughs> having a change in life and change in scenery can be a good thing in life. Just to be able to get something new, get something fresh, get something where you can actually get away and change a, a change of scenery for both mental clarity and physical clarity is nice. Now, my opinion, though, moving into the to a moving uh, to a new city, I just city life has been nice since we've been here, but it definitely tells me that I want to be back in the country. I'm a country boy at heart, okay, and I can tell you that. You guys are just wanting to change cities. Okay, so here, okay, here, here's the thing. One of the greatest things that my wife and I ever did was to move away from family. Seriously. And I know that's kind of hard for some people to, to understand. It is true. Moving away from family, it allowed us to, it forced us and allowed us to um, get, to create our own life, to be us, to be separate from our family, Although we were still involved with our family and we still did with our things with our family. I mean, the furthest, the, well, living in Utah was the furthest we've ever been. I, we came here for work. And yeah, I still have a brother fairly close and I have a sister that's a few hours away. But in reality, though, reality, though, when we moved at least three hours away from my parents and my bro- other siblings and things like that, it made us be work better together. So we didn't complain about things like this. Your friends are always going to be your friends. Your family is going to be always be your family. It is nice to have that family close knit stuff, but also family and friends can get in the way of growing a real relationship where it needs to be. I, I can easily say that uh, mine and my wife's relationship is where it is because we forced ourselves to leave an atmosphere of not a toxic atmosphere because it wasn't toxic, but leave an atmosphere where we, we were, we were, could be, held at what can be considered complacent it forced us to do things that made us become better adults better parents so it, it may not be a bad thing what you guys got to do needed what you guys need to do is sit down and talk about first of all the main reason why you're moving why you want to move right the pros and cons of moving because moving is not going to be cheap okay if you're renting a place no big deal you can you know once your lease is up get out go to the new place no no not an issue at all but if you're if you're going to have to buy a house, expect to pay high prices in no matter what city you you go to because housing market is not where it should be. I mean, some say it is where it needs to be. Some say it's not. Depends on what, what end of the spectrum you are, whether if you're on the buying side or the selling side. And if you're like in California, Utah or whatever. Um if you, so you you, you got you need to go look at all the pros and cons. Compare them. And if you if the decision is you, between the two of you guys that this needs to be done because it can help you guys get to a better spot, absolutely do it. But you got to be willing to have that that uh, that conversation. And be, so as you say, how to find the compromise, the, 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 how to find a compromise without resenting each other, you got to talk about it. Have the conversation. Do the things that most people don't want to do. Most people, you know, it's funny. Most people don't want to sit down and have a conversation. They just want to do the the quick and easy thing. I mean, yes, the quick and easy thing is what we all would like because we can be in and be out and be done. But it doesn't help you. Quick and easy thing doesn't help you grow. It won't, it won't make you a better person. So you just need to sit down and talk about it. Write down the pros and cons. Do it in a civil manner. 
Don't say you're not willing to move. Just say, hey, we need to figure out why we would really need to move. Okay? Because obviously they feel strongly about it. So there's that. Hey, Devin. Every time I see my parents, they make a, may make comments about my weight. Whether it's telling me I've lost too much or gained a few pounds, it's like they can't help themselves. I've told them how much it bothers me, but they just laugh it off and say that they're just trying to help. It's starting to affect my self-esteem, and I dread going to family events because I know it's going to come up. How do I get them to stop without causing a huge family fight? Tell them how they've lost, how they've gained weight. Tell them, yeah, I, you know, I'm working on mine, and I know, and I, honestly, <laughs> I'm gonna you I'm gonna be a little bit of, little uh, kind of a jerk here, but to, you know, but nobody does that. People don't do that. You shouldn't do that. Should I say? <laughs> if they're gonna be like that, and they're they're doing it because oh, they're they're just trying to help. No big deal. They're not. They're, they're, that's just rude. Now, if it was a drastic thing, then I would, you know, I would, I would probably br- bring it up to my, I, I mean, not with my kids. So I, so here's the, when it comes to my kids, I do worry about them and their health. And like our our youngest daughter, um, she's very, she's thin like my wife, and she was thin. Uh, she's very thin, actually. She's very thin, um, and I worry about her health based off of that. Now I have had her to go to doctors to talk about it, make sure she's doing okay. And, and she's in a healthy weight. She is. She is in a healthy weight. But I see, girl, I can see how, you know, I, never, I was never, the dad's like, well, you look too skinny or you look too fat. You don't, you don't do it that way. Um, For what we did, because we wanted to make sure that she was in where she needed to be. You know, we normal physical, health, physical, she went in and she got checked out and they, t- they went through the numbers and the doctor, our, 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 well, her pediatrician up until she was 18, t- 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 too old to go see her, would tell her straight up, you you need to, you know, need to do this or you need to do that. The doctors can do that. To get your parents to stop, just comment on how much they've gained weight. or how, how, Because if they're that type of parent, that's going to bother them. You, you, so just comment back to them. Tell them how, much, how, how, how horrible or how, how great they look. Do reverse it back onto them, make them feel like they're making you feel. And I, and, and I know that's kind of petty, but the reality is, is they keep doing it and it's affecting you. I mean, you don't, you shouldn't do that. What you need to do is just not worry about it. You have to understand no matter how petty we want to get, no matter how, how bad we want to, we want to tell, you know, tell people off when it comes to stuff like that, they're not going to change. What you need to do is just ignore it. You could bring it up and say, "Hey, I don't really appreciate this. I live my life. I, I and you know, I know you say you're trying to help. It's not helping me. It's not. So why don't we just talk about things that do matter? And yes, it will get awkward. You don't have to turn it into a fight. Just say, "I don't. I don't want. I don't want to hear it. Simple as that. And let it be as that. Move on. I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand the, what some parents, I mean, that's just, if my kid was too, too skinny, like, and I could tell too, too skinny, I'm going to bring that up, but I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to take them to a doctor and say, you're not healthy. And here's the, what they're going to have to say. And have the doctor do it. So, I mean, seriously, it, when, if you are, if you're, if you were to that point where you were not healthy, then there is a problem. If you're, you know, mama Cass or, or, or the opposite, uh, um, what's her name? Carpenter. Those are two extremes. You got to be careful. You can't do that. So, yeah. Hey, Devin. One of my closest friends has a bad habit of, of constantly flaking on plans at the last minute. We set, we, we'll set something up, and then an hour before we're supposed to meet, they, they'll cancel and have some excuse. I've been, it's been happening more and more, and I'm starting to feel like they don't value our friendship. I don't want to overreact, but it's frustrating when I rearrange my schedule for them and they cancel last minute. Should I say something or am I being too sensitive? It's a little of both. Okay. Here's the thing. Your friend, most likely, especially if you're doing things that cost money, your friend probably is broke. I mean, this, this sounds like a broke person thing. It really does. Sounds like something broke people do. 
I can't make it today. I'm ah, just, oh, I got a headache or, or they just, or, or they just don't want to hang out with. So there's, there's different aspects of this one. They don't want to hang out Two, they, um, they're broke and they're the broke friend and that's fine too. So find things that are, if you're doing things that are free, then they're, they're, that's, you know, they shouldn't do that. They're just not committed to it. Find you a better friend. This sounds more like an acquaintance more than a friend. Seriously. If they if if you guys make plans and they can't follow through at least one of them, they're they're not a friend. They're just using you. So is it, most people have friends. Most friends in in the world these days are not real, not true real friends. They're actually just people that uh, use you because you offer some type of service for them. Whether it's a company, whatever you give them money, I don't know. They offer some, you offer, you're offering some type of benefit that benefits their life in some way. So you benefit their life in some way. So this sounds like an acquaintance that, that, is, that is using for you for something that benefits them. So honestly, just see what happens when you don't hang out with them, when you don't make plans with them, make them make the plans. If they make the plans and then you show up and they don't show up, I'm telling you, you got that answer. Not everybody that's in your life needs to be in your life. That's a, that's seriously simple. That's the way that works. I mean, you know, you, so we moved to Utah 10 years ago and I'm going to bag on, I'm going to bash on Utah a little bit here. Okay. We moved to Utah, Utah 10 years ago, um, moved from, uh, from Tennessee to here. And one thing I have, uh, I learned about people in Utah, people in Utah do not say what they mean. You, you people in Utah will say one thing and do another. People in Utah will, they'll be nice to your face, but then they'll backbite you in behind your back. And, and that is an overgenerality. Not everybody in Utah is like that. But a lot of them are. And that's kind of what this sounds like. Okay? You know, if, if you... So we move here. We get some friends. And we do the same thing. They don't show up. Or when they plan something, we show up and then it's good. The people, people use you. Until they don't need you, and that's one thing. You gotta, that's one, that's one thing. When I try to raise my kids, I teach them to be one very straightforward and be almost blunt to a core. Right? Tell people how it is, and you can tell people how it is and not be rude, but hold tight to your beliefs. And I will tell you, the only people, and this is one thing I try, 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 try to teach my kids: the only people that will be there for you in the end are going to be your family. Your friends will flake out on you. Your friends, friends will disappear. You're, you'll date people, and you're, the people you, you date are going to do weird uh, things, and they're going to disappear too. I mean, there's a million scenarios here. But in the end, it all comes down to one thing. It's going to end up being family. Now, you could, be, you could come from a sucky family, and that's, that happens too. But you got to do what's right. We have a situation going on in our family right now. This was... And it's our oldest son. He's he's you know he he needs some help, and we're trying to get him some help. But he's he's to the point where he's an adult young man, and he doesn't want to do things. He he, he thinks his friends are more important than anything else. He thinks that he's and but he, he yet he still complains how he's alone, how he's uh, no one believe trusts him, no one wants to do anything. They, all he does is work, and there's no one that, that ever cares about him. So he, he, he has had a lot of tr- struggles in his life. Most of those struggles were self-inflicted. I'm going to say that. They were, were because he's made choices, and those choices have uh, caused him to create, you know, cause different problems for him. Now, he's, and right now, he's on, a, he's on a tangent where he's like, don't ever talk to me again. He's still my kid. I still love him. Doesn't mean I'm never going to talk to him again. He's still on text message string with the family currently until he decides to delete himself off. I'm still going to call him on his birthdays. I'm still going to call him on, on holidays. He's welcome to come here on holidays. We we have one rule in our house, and it's, it's don't yell at me, don't yell at my wife, and don't yell at your siblings. If you can't follow that rule, you're not welcome at home. Pretty simple. So we, we hope he'll come home for Christmas. I don't think he will. He he cussed my wife out the other day. He cussed me out the other day. 
because, well, he cussed my wife out the other day because Apple wanted to charge him. And this is literally, there was no other strings in the, attached. This is literally how it works. She cussed, he cussed her out because the Apple store wanted to charge him $100 to fix his phone that was broken. And so he got mad. And so he cussed my wife out. It's not what kids do. It's a, this, is a, this is our current family struggle right now. <clears throat> it's hard. We deal with it. It doesn't mean we don't love our kid. We always will, do love our kid. He's going through stuff, and he hasn't figured out his life quite how he wants to. He's 21 years old. He wants to change a lot of things. He wants to do a lot of things, but he doesn't know where he fits in, but he's going about it on the wrong way, and he doesn't want, you know, he'll ask for opinions, but then he doesn't want to accept the opinions. Right, here's the thing. Opinions are opinion. I give advice all the time when it comes to this. I don't give my kids any extra advice unless they ask me advice. I, I treat my kids no different than I t- treat the, the, the questions that come in on the, on, on the emails or whatever. The re- I realize I will not give any advice to anyone unless they ask for it. Now, the cool thing about advice, you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to follow through with it. If you ask someone's opinion, it is an opinion. It is not the law. It is not what you're supposed to do. Now, could that advice help you? Absolutely. But you don't have to listen to it. The cool thing about being an adult, you can take advice, you can give advice, and you can listen to the or the, and take advice or give advice all around, but you don't have to do it. You have a brain. That's one thing about the hum, human nature is awesome. We have a brain. Everybody's got a brain. And we can say, hey, this is the right thing to do. I asked for a question. They gave me a decent answer. It sounds like it fits in. That's how that works. I mean, I don't know any other way to do it. So we're, we, we struggle with our oldest son because he's in the stage of his life where he hates his parents for no reason. It's sad. It tears me up. I hate it. It's one reason I didn't do a podcast the other day because I was m- mentally and emotionally drained reason I didn't go live I was mentally and emotionally drained that's why it's super important why you when you have friends in your life and you have people in your life that you make sure that they are true friends you make sure that they and understand a friend's a friend it doesn't mean they'll make their family and same thing with family family's family but it doesn't mean you have to make them your friend you do what's best for you and you try to take care of those that are around you that you love, and you do the do, you, do the right thing no matter what, even if it hurts you, right? If you tell someone you're going to do something, you follow through. If you, you know, it, it, it in general, if you just do the right thing, every well, if if you if if you're going to start anywhere, if you're going to start anywhere, start with telling the truth. Tell the truth. If you can tell the truth and be tr- so. You know, if you can get to the, get, say the truth, no matter what, your life's going to change, and it's going to change for the better. So if you if you're struggling with your friends just being, you know, they're flaking on you all the time, they're not your friends. Find new ones, find better ones, be there for them just like they would be there for you. It goes both ways. Life is hard, but we don't have to make it any harder than it already is. We just got to, we, what we need to do, the key thing in our, in our life that we need to do, we need to seek for happiness and we need to treat others with respect, no matter where they are in their, in, a, in any background, political, whatever, just treat them with respect. You know, it's like you, you get, you get more with a honey than you do with vinegar. Simple as that. Hey, Devin, I've been on my job for a few years and I've gotten really good at it. Almost too good. It's to the point where I'm not challenged anymore. And I feel like I'm just going through the motions every day. I want to do something that excites me again. But the problem is the pay and benefits are currently at my current job are great. And I'm wor- and I'm worried about starting new over and somewhere else. Should I stay in my comfort zone and or take a risk on something more fulfilling? <laughs> okay. You got a hard problem here. 
you're too good at your job that you got where it's so easy that you don't have to do worry about it anymore. And so you're, you're okay. Your problem is it's just not exciting anymore. It's not challenging. Okay. And you get your benefits and your job are better. So why, why don't you ask for a raise? Why don't you ask for um, more responsibility? I mean, if, if you recognize that it's too easy for you, seriously, go to your manager and say, Hey, I'd like a new challenge. Can you, can we up this up now? If that doesn't do it for you, if you just want a complete change and you want to do better, then what you got to do is the, the simple thing. If you want to make something better for you, if you, if you, then what do you want to do? Start something new for yourself. Start something new on your own because, okay, here's, if, if you were to do that, say you went down the entrepreneurial uh, side of, of life. If you went down that path, then you have the benefits and you have the good pay from your job. And then you create something on your own to bring in more money that becomes a challenge. So you have a cha- you're being challenged and then you have the old standby always there to, ha- to worry about, to take care of you. Right? So you could fail at the, cha- at the, at the entrepreneurial side, but who cares if you failed, you still got the backup, right? Now, unless you just, well, I mean, honestly, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you, you, love the money and you love the benefits and that keeps you covered. That's really what you're saying. But what you don't like is the fact that you're not being challenged. So you need to create your own challenge, whether it's for the company. And so you go ask for uh, more responsibilities and more um, things to do to help fulfill that. Or you just create your own. I'm one for do, creating my own and creating a life with that. That's a bit more of an entrepreneur. That's where I would be. That's what, that's where I like. I like being, you know, on my own separate and out to the side. Honestly, that, that would, that's perfect for me. So that's what I would do. I would create my own own path and figure out what would goes on for there. Because honestly, if you want more fulfillment in life, then create something that's fulfilling because if you're already too, too good at what you do, <laughs> you're not being challenged and you don't want to quit. You just, you, you got to do that. You got to create your own. You, you need to challenge yourself and make yourself better. Plain and simple. Hey, Devin, my partner has been hitting, uh, has been hinting that they want to combine our finances and open a joint bank account, but I'm not sure I'm ready for that step. I've, we've been together for a while and I trust them, but I also value my financial independence. I'm scared that combining finances will lead to arguments about money or worse, make me feel like I'm losing control over my own spending. How do I bring this up, up, up without sounding like I don't trust them? Here's the deal. (laughs) If you're not married, don't join you. Don't, don't combine your bank accounts. I'm serious. Sounds like you got, okay, here's the thing. If you're living together, but you're not married, never combine your bank accounts. The only time you should combine your bank accounts is when you are married, because then you have access to those assets as needed if someone wants to die. That's the reality, okay? Now, if you are not married and say you are living together, just make sure the bills are covered. Make sure you get you got the, your basis covered. Then it doesn't matter. Seriously, split you split things equally. If you both live in the house, you're splitting the rent equally, or you're splitting the, the mortgage equally. I, I would I would never buy a house with someone that I'm not married to. I'll tell you that. That's insane. But you do you you gotta you gotta so your financial independence and your financial safety relies upon the fact that you're not married. Don't do it. You don't have to trust them. Don't have to do any of that. Because if you guys were to break up, yes, you've been together for a while, but say you were to break up. I mean, there's, there's no, there's no divorce papers. There's no lawyer involved to cut the, to split the finance, split the, uh, the assets. You could be left with everything. Everything could be dumped on you if they were to leave you right now. And you would be financially destitute. So that being said, don't do it unless you're married. When you're married, then you're working at it and you're doing it together. 
you're making your life where it should be because you're working for a life together if you're married. But if you're not married, don't go down that road. That road is scary. You're you're setting yourself up for the failure that you that you feel like you're you're going to have, and you 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 want to keep your you know, your independence. And again, I'll say it: <laughs> if if you are married, you do need your own bank account. They need they need their own bank account, and then y'all both need your both own bank account. Now you need to be you need to be even if you are married and you have your own bank accounts, you you do need to have access to your spouse's account. You need to be able to get into it because if something wants to happen, then those assets you you would need those assets that are there. And that can be done. You just have bank account. Like my wife and I are on all our, all our bank accounts together. But my account is my account. Her account is her account. Although we they are still joint accounts. They are mine and mine. Hers is hers. And then we have the one that we use jointly that is ours. I mean, I, honestly, I did, that's a scary road. I don't know why people do that. I don't know why it would be. It, it should not be. It, you should not do that. It should not be legal. I don't think it should never be legal. I know I had my mom on my bank account at one time because I was gone for a couple of years and she she made sure everything was covered, everything was taken care of, and it was done. So my mom handled that, but I trusted my mom. But then once I got back from where I was at, it, she took herself off the, the account. It was just me. That's great. That's good. But yeah, you, 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 the answer is no. And, and, the, and you know, you, it's going to sound like you don't trust them, but just tell them, hey, unless we're married, we shouldn't do it because financially it doesn't make sense. And if they don't like that, well, too bad. Make them put a ring on your finger. <laughs> there you go. Anyway. Hey, Devin. My neighbors are constantly loud, whether it's blasting music, having parties, or just being generally noisy all the time at night. I've tried politely bringing it up, uh, up a couple of times, but nothing changes. I don't want to escalate it by getting the landlord or authorities involved, but I'm seriously losing sleep and patience over here. How do I get them to keep it down without turning into the, a, turning it into a neighborhood feud? It's a good question. Honestly, you, you probably, if they, if you've talked to them and you've tried to get it taken care of and they're not doing it, it's going to be a feud. Either you just ignore it and don't say anything or you got to get the landlords involved and so if that's the case then and maybe you should just find a new place to live a quieter place now if you just got there and it's then it's like that and it keeps it going and you can you can record it and you can hear them you need to have evidence for one get the evidence that it's like that right you don't need to call the cops this is not a, a police uh, situation I mean, unless it, unless other people have the same problem but which if they if you're having the problem there other people are having the same problem too because they're hearing it as well sounds like you're in an apartment building Probably an older building where there's bad insulation, things like that. So the only thing I can think of, you have to talk to your landlord about it. And unless you just don't want to, then if you don't want to, then you just got to deal with it. And dealing with it can be sucky, but you'll be okay. It just comes down to, you know, learn to live with it. <laughs> it sounds horrible, but learn to live with it. Now you could do the alternative and, and have a nice loud, uh, do be have, have be loud yourself. And if that's the case, then you're going to get on their nerves. And if you get on their nerves, then maybe maybe they'll stop. I don't know. But no, I mean, seriously, to, to do this the right way, you probably should talk to your landlord and let them know, and go with go to them with evidence. Let them let the landlord know that you've talked to them, but that it doesn't seem to be working. Um, and your landlord should be able to say, "Well, we've had multiple complaints." Now they don't have to say it's from one person. If they do it right, they can say, hey, we, there is a, and mo most, pl the, most places, I would check your lease. Check your lease. Most places in your lease has a noise um, uh, uh, clause or something like that in the lease where you're supposed to be quiet, especially if you're in an apartment building. So that being said, if, the, if they're breaking that part of the lease, bring it up to your landlord. Say, listen, I, I need to either be giving back my uh, deposit and I need to move, and you're going to have to help pay me to move because they're not. You're not willing to take take their take care of the problem, or you take care of the problem. Simple as that. Because you know, again, the right thing's the right thing. If you've done your due diligence and it's still not working, then you got to get you got to talk to the landlord. 
I mean, the, the, there's no other way around it. It's just, uh, yeah. I mean, there's you, 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 if you if you need your sleep at night, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Hello, how are you guys doing? Hey, Devin, I've always dreamt of uh, traveling and seeing the world, but my partner isn't into it at all. They'd uh, rather stay home, stick to routines, and avoid spending money on trips. I love them, but I'm scared that if I don't, uh, if I uh, if I don't get to travel and explore while I can, I'll regret it, regret it later. I don't want to pressure them into something they don't want, but I also don't want to give up on my dreams. How do I find a middle ground? Okay, I got a story for you guys. Uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 11 years ago, probably 11 years ago, 11, maybe 12 years ago, we lived in uh, Tennessee. Um, we, when we lived in Tennessee, we had a, I had an opportunity. I got to meet some pretty cool people. Um, I know some good country music stars. I know some, uh, you know, the actors and all those types of things. And we had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to take all my kids and my wife. And we were given the opportunity to be given a bus that would be retrofitted for our family. So it would be a bunk bus. So it would have uh, bunk beds for all the kids. So it would be all five kids would be in bunk beds. And we'd have a master bedroom for my wife and I. And there would be, there would be a living room inside the bus and a kitchen combined, all that type of thing. But the problem was... We were going to have to live in this thing for one year. It was an opportunity to be in a t- on a TV show that was basically about us, um, and uh, it was actually going to was go- it had the potential the 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 potential name of the Young Blood American Dream. <laughs> I gave my wife the option. My wife does not want like one. She didn't like the idea of us traveling. And having to homeschool our kids. Because that's one thing we would have to do. We would have to pull all our kids out of school. Homeschool them in the bus while traveling. In return though for doing this. The uh, TQ, if I remember right, it was TLC. They offered us a very large sum of money. Plus we got a percentage of the ad revenue. And it would have it would have equaled to be around about a million dollars a year. For doing it. And if it was renewed for a second season. It would have been like two or three times more, more than that. We would have a film crew filming every aspect of our life. That was the other problem my wife had. We'd have a film crew recording everything. All of our, If we had an argument, that would be on TV. If we had a, a breakdown, that would be on TV. If, if the kids were the kids got hurt, that would be on TV. If I got hurt or she had got hurt, that would be on TV. There would be every aspect of our life minus bedroom stuff would be on TV. So we talked about it, but I, I let the decision fall into my wife's hands. I wanted to do it, but understanding the pros and cons of both, of, of the whole thing, understanding the, 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 the pros and cons of it all, she had to be, it was not a decision I could just make and say, hey, you have to do this. You're going to do this. It was a decision that we, I had to make, that we had to make, not I had to make, we had to make together. And if one of us was not, that felt uneasy about it, we didn't do it. Plain and simple. It would have set us up financially like crazy. We would have been able to travel the whole country and get paid to travel the whole country. This was 10, 12 years ago. You know, we, we you know, we, the, the people that were producing this show, one of the producers was actually, um, what was it? It was a, it was a country rapper. What is his name? Um, I can't even remember his name anymore. Um, uh, it'll come to me, whatever. But so we had that opportunity to do that. And my, and so my wife didn't immediately say no. She thought about it for, for, for a little while. And then I had to get back with the, with the producers about the show. And then they said, they asked me what, 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 what we didn't want to do. And I had to turn them down because my wife said, no, she didn't want to do it. We had, we had the opportunity to travel. 
I love traveling. I love going everywhere. I have been to every state but four. That's just me. Now, my kids, I've been to a lot of states, but not as many as I've been to. I've been to every state but four, and I would have been able to do it with my family this time versus doing it for work. Needless to say, I was a little disappointed. I wasn't mad, but I was disappointed. And so with that, be, with, with that being there, my disappointment, I got over it. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, a year or so later, we moved to Utah. I took a, a consulting, I took a job out here to help a company better themselves and make more money and all that other stuff. And so I took that and did, then I've done a couple of consulting jobs and, you know, been, still been able to do all this stuff, the podcast and all those things, which is nice. But I, we turn, we turned down a million plus a year. Because we felt uneasy about it. Because my wife, my wife, so again, so today, <laughs> fast forward now, we are 12 years later. Today, I took my wife. She wasn't feeling well. She has been, she's been out sick because of, not, not sick for like the flu or anything like that. She's got some stuff going on. And uh, so we, uh, I took her, we went and got some uh, lunch today. You know, woke up, took, a, took the morning. And then this afternoon, we went and got some lunch. She wanted a burger. So I took her to get her burger. And, uh, we ate, and then I'm like, you know, let's go check out some stuff. So we drove over to where uh, where all the RV park uh, RVs are for sale, and we looked at the RVs and the travel trailers, mainly the travel trailers or the campers, as they call them. Um, we looked at those and met with a sales guy. Of course, they want to sell us one right now. I'm like, nope. If we do this, it's going to be within the next year. It'll be next year before we do it. We're and I said, my wife just wants to get an idea what it would be, what it would be, be like. So then I brought up to her today. I said, hey, babe, we're going to be moving back south. We're going to build, be building a house or we're going to be remodeling a house. One or the other. I don't know yet. We're still looking. We're looking at property, looking at houses, looking at everything. I said, if we buy a buy property, we can buy a larger amount of property. We won't be a house on it. We will need some place to live in temporarily while we're building the house. Now, I'm going to do most of the work myself. Okay. I can do it. I know how to do it. No problem. So she's like, yeah. So we went and looked. So that's one reason we went to go look at the, the trailers. Then on the other side, the trailer becomes dual fold. So once we live out there, then we want to come visit our kids that live here in Utah. We just jump in the car, pull the trailer, and we show up here and we got we got a place to stay. We, it's all, we're not having to, we don't stay with them. We don't stay in a hotel. We just pull into like some campground. We park there and we stay at the campground in our camp, in our camper, right? Now I did bring it up again. I said, hey, what if I could get it set up? where we can get paid to travel, travel for a year, minimum a year, right? Because that opportunity was there once. I know that the opportunity can be there again. All I have to do is just reach out to some of the producers and see what they say. You know, we, I just, I myself just filmed, I'm not saying I was a main character. I definitely was not a main character. Um, I just filmed a, a TV show a few months ago which was an amazing experience. I've got, I, I was able to meet some awesome people, but I'm like, why couldn't we just do this again? What if I can get the, the producers to say, hey, let's, let's revamp the idea and do it. I said, we're, we're, I said, we're now 12 years older. I said, we have a, our only one that would be, have to be going with us technically would be our youngest son. And I said, he'll be starting high school, so that changes things. But he doesn't play sports, so that there's that. That opens that up. So we could actually get – we could homeschool him. Technically, we could put him in like a correspondent school that does online schooling, and he could do that all online with a good computer. And we could travel around the country and get paid to do it. So I, I proposed that to my wife. <sighs> Sadly, her reply is this. I just want to set down some roots. I don't want to travel. I just want to, I just want to have some land, grow a garden like we used to have. I don't really want to do all that traveling as it, especially if we have to film it all. I'm like, well, we wouldn't have to film it. We'd have to have some, we'd have our GoPros that we'd talk into occasionally. I said, but we'd have it. There'd be a film crew. They would handle all that. She said, I don't know. I don't think it's totally blown out of the water. I know it's not her number one choice right now. I think if the if the opportunity and the money was right, and if I could finagle it where 
we have a home base, which could be the property that we're building a house on, which I think this is more feasible for what we want to do, what, what I want to do. So the happy medium here, the middle ground is we're going to probably have to take this not just in the country, but make it more international. So I've got some work on my side to do to try to figure out how to, how to convince my wife to do this. So as far as your question on, on how do you find a middle ground, you got to have the discussion, find out what their, what their holdbacks are because you don't want to have the regret of never traveling. And that's where I'm at. I don't want to have the, the regrets of never traveling. Not everything, and th- this was one thing that my wife understands too. Not everything in this house is about her, and not everything in this house is about me. So we got to find the middle ground. So that's where I've got to push to figure out where the middle ground is for us to do our traveling, just like you got to. So you got to talk about it, but you need to do it. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that everybody needs to travel. Everybody needs to see everything. Everybody needs to go every place. Everybody needs to see everything. There's there's so much out there. If you just stuck with the United States, there's so much to see in this country. It is completely insane. There are so many beautiful places. I mean, this country's got everything. Now, I've seen most of the country. I'm missing four states. Maine, Vermont, Alaska, Hawaii. Those are my four. I've got to see those. Those are my that's it, That would fulfill that and get that off my bucket list. That has to be done. But you, no one needs to go live their life with regret of not being able to do something. So there, has, there is middle ground, and you just got to figure out where that middle ground is for what you want to do. My wife does not like camping at all. Her idea of camping is a, a, a hotel. So that's, one, that's yet another reason why the, the, the little camper, the, the, uh, the travel trailer, because then it gets us where we can go to like little to uh, um, Yellowstone, but yet be comfortable. Plain and simple. There's that. Anyway. Hey Devin, I've noticed that I that whew, I've noticed that I'm always the one reaching out to make plans with friends. I've already talked about one like this, so we're going to skip this one. Sorry. So you wrote me. I appreciate it. But the reality is, if you're, it, it's going to bother you no matter what. If your friends aren't showing up for you, and you're making all the plans, and they're not, and, and no, get you better friends. Sorry, that sounds rude, but that that's the sad reality here. You'll be okay. All right, let's see what else we got. Hey, Devin, I've been living in what most people would call a good life. Quotations. Steady job, solid friend, solid friendships, or solid relationships, good health. But lately, I've been wondering if I'm actually happy. Everything seems to be fine on the outside, but inside, I feel like this growing sense of uh, dissatisfaction. It's not that I'd, I want to blow up, up my life, but part of me wonders if I'm settling for something that doesn't fulfill me, is it normal to feel this way? Or even when everything looks fine, how do I figure out if I'm genuinely happy or if I'm just stuck in a comfortable routine? So happiness is a choice, okay? I tell my kids this. You can choose to be happy. You choose to be sad. You can, a good life, there's nothing wrong with a good life. If you've got a good steady job, if you've got good uh, solid relationship, you've got good health, you, you are better than uh, most people in this country, most people in this world. You, you have already succeeded, right? Um, and you're, but you're wondering if, if, you're, uh, if that's really happiness. You know, that, I don't know if that's happiness. Yeah, I think that's, okay, this is, <laughs> these are problems that not a lot of people have, okay? Some people wish they had everything that you have. And, and, and that being said, does that make you feel like, or am I trying to make you feel like a jerk? No, I'm not trying to make you feel like a jerk. The reality is, is this. What you have is awesome, but you're feeling like there's something missing. So I'm going to say it. Most people's lives are not fulfilled because they have everything going on for them. They're usually fulfilled because they're not helping and they're not serving. 
and they're not doing things that are extra. And what I mean extra, like go, go finding things, finding you know people who need help and helping those people. And I'm not saying give money. I'm not saying do that. Sure, you can do that. You can volunteer at the at the um, homeless shelter and feed people. That's great and all. But you need to, you know, there, there's more to life than just stuff. There's more to life than just being, you know, than just being, you know, having a steady job. You got all the good stuff already covered. You have your basis. You you are living and coasting. What you're trying to tell me is you don't want to coast anymore. You want a little bit more excitement. Well, one, I'd say go travel. Okay, that's cool. But on the other side, you need you you want to be more fulfilling. You need to be serving others. And you need to figure out a good way to do that on your own so then it's making it where you can... Uh, you know, how, do I, how, do I, how do you tell someone who's comfortable to get over themselves? Seriously, you need to get over yourself. You're thinking too much into this. You're you're making this a big deal for no reason at all. This is not a big deal. This is this is simple. You, <laughs> you, you're you're creating. Are you you're healthy? You're you're happy. You feel, you don't, but you don't think you're happy. Well, what makes you sad? Don't do that. Do the opposite of what what would make you sad. You need to be helping other people. I'm serious. You need to be finding ways to help people in ways that that matters. You know, I mean, my wife and I, we've always wanted to be those people to um, that would just walk through the grocery store. And we've done this a couple of times. I want to be able to do it more financially. We're not there yet. Where you just walk up and you see, you know, you look at all the people in the cash register and you just walk up and you slide your card and you pay for it and walk away. We've done that a few times. It's cool. We never recorded it because we didn't want to push that. You, 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 you need more to your life, okay? If you're not religious, maybe find religion because that can fulfill you too. To know that there's something greater than you and that can help you get into more things to help people too. I know that's not the answer that anyone's that a lot of people don't want to hear. A lot of people don't want to hear me say, "Hey, be, become closer to God." But you should, whether you believe in Him or not. It's true. That'll bring you more happiness too. Plain and simple. We'll see you, man. Have a good night. I mean, you know, I love that you're comfortable. I love that you got a routine. But honestly, figure out what you need to try things. Go out, try things, and go that route. Just try some stuff. Plain and simple. Try some stuff. Drop off groceries at people's doors. Whether they need it. (laughs) Seriously, drop it off. Walk away. It's the little things. I'm telling you, it's the little things. If you want more happiness in your life, do things that are beyond you. Things that don't involve you, things that you never would get to put, the things that put you outside of your box, do those things. That's what you got to do. Plain and simple. Hey, Devin, I've been with my partner for four years and I love them, but lately I've started to feel like I'm losing pieces of myself. We do everything together, which is great, but I'm realizing that I've that I've let go of of some of the things I used to love. Hobbies, time, time with friends, even small things that made me feel like me. It's not the, their fault, but I'm not happy in our relationship, but I it's not their fault that I'm not happy in, my, in in our relationship, but I can't shake the feeling that I've lost touch with some of, with with I've lost touch with who I was before we got together. Is is this normal part of being in a long term relationship, 
or am I sacrificing too much of my uh, my individuality? Okay. Relationships. <laughs> okay, the Bible's in you know, the scriptures say we should be one with each other. That is true. But that doesn't mean that you have to lose your individuality as a person when you get married. When you get married, you're two people that are make, creating one family. That's what's happening. Now, <laughs> when, my, when, I, when our, our oldest daughter got married, it was awesome. I was super sad. I was a, the typical dad blubbering because my my I my daughter just moved away and got married to this guy and uh, heaven forbid he's an amazing guy, dang it, right? But you're two individuals creating a life together, a life. Now, the thing is, with two individuals creating a life, you are still individuals in a life. My wife and I, I have never once to ask my wife permission to do anything. She's not my mom, nor would she ever be my mom, nor should I even treat her like my mom. I treat my wife with respect because she's my queen. She's the queen of my home. But she's not my mom. I don't have to ask for permission to go out. I don't have to have permission to buy something. I don't have to have permission to hang out with my friends. If I want to do something, I do it. I know some people are like, oh, big man. you will No, here's the thing. When it comes to have, being an individual in a, in a relationship, you should be an individual. It's the, that's the reason you two got together. I didn't marry my wife because she was just like me. How sick and gross would that be? I don't want to be me. I would not want to marry me. I want someone that's better than me. Someone who thinks differently than me. Because that's important to me. Because I want someone, someone that's going to push me be, and challenge me to be, be to be to be better. I don't want to be married to someone that's just going that I, that I'm gonna have to. They always have to cater to you know them and say, okay, can I do this or oh, can can I eat my my dinner now? No, you don't do that. That's not a marriage. That's not a relationship. If you've given up on hobbies, that was a choice. If you've given up on time with friends, that was a choice. You made a choice. And so now you've made a choice and you're unhappy in your marriage. You may have a great marriage. You may have a great relationship in your marriage, but you're not happy because you don't have some of the other things that help you as an individual to grow. This, what I'm doing right here, this is my hobby that is turning into a full, that's turning into a full-time thing, which is a beautiful deal, right? Need, need more sponsors because that would make it even better. But the reality is, is that this, does my wife do it with me? Yeah, sometimes, not all the time. Actually, she'll be here tomorrow with me, which is awesome. She used to do it all the time more, but she she works a full time job, so she has to be there for that. So I so I cut her some slack so she can do it. Because the thing is, this is my this is my thing. This is not her thing. This is what I love doing. This is enjoyment for me. Do I have to have her, per, her permission to do this? No. Do I ask her to come do this with me? Yes, but she doesn't have to. Just because I do something doesn't mean she has to do something. Just because she does something doesn't mean I have to do it. It's it's a, it's a separate. You you're an individual. Now I have siblings that ask their wives for permission to do go play basketball with 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 the boys. I don't I don't agree with that. I, I, you know again you're an individual. You know I don't I I, when I again I don't ask my wife to spend money. And the reason I say that it's simple. I know, and just like she knows, what bills need to be paid. And we don't take money that comes out of the bill pay uh, fee, f- funding. The money that goes into pay the bills stays in there with the bills. The money that goes into the uh, my personal money is my personal money. Her personal money is her personal money. She wants to get her nails done. She doesn't ask me for permission. She just goes and does it. If I want to go buy a, a, a pew pew, I go buy one because I want to. It's not because I was given permission. If I want to go hang out with my friends, I go hang out with my friends. I just don't have any friends. No, that's a joke. Whatever. <laughs> it, you know, the, again, it's 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 simple. You 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 got into a marriage because you love the person, but you got into a marriage not to give up of who you were. You because of who you were is the reason you guys got together. 
You didn't get together because he, you or him wanted to be the same person. You got together because you wanted to be together in, in a joint effort in growing a family or creating a family or, or being together as, as a couple. That's what you got together for. If, you, if he got with you because he's like, I can make her turn into me. What the crap is that? You got together because you like that person and you love that person. And you want to be part of that person's life. So if you, you need to make sure your, your marriage is good. You need to make sure you guys are happy. Now, you need, to be, you need to be happy together, but you also need to be happy individually. It goes that way. You have to be happy individually. And if you're not happy individually, you need to have this conversation with your, with your spouse and say, hey, here's what I need. Here's how I'm feeling. What do you recommend? Ask them their opinion. And if they're a good person, I guarantee they're going to say, well, why did you lose contact with your friends? Talk to them. You have to. You, 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 if you don't do that, you're, you're being a detriment to yourself. Pretty simple. So do it. Have that conversation. And then I guarantee they'll be behind you 100% saying, okay, yeah, go find your friends. Bring them over. Hang out here. Hang out there. Do what you want. Don't you, you, There are some sacrifices that you do when you get married. There are. There are sacrifices, and there are some things that you give up. Because the, the thing is, the stuff that you give up are stuff that you, you should give up anyway. Because some of that stuff, I, I don't want to, I do, there's some things as a single man I don't want to bring into a relationship. Really. And those things I can leave dead, and they, and they stay dead. Because when I got married, that made me help make, that's, and especially we've been married for 23 years, that has helped me become a better person. Because I want to be a better person, that's how that happens. Okay. She makes me a better person, and hopefully I make her a better person. But never lose your individuality. You are an individual. They're an individual. You're not the same person. Now, as a, as a marriage, you are one. That means you're going for the same goals. Whether it's, and it should be your same financial goals. You should have, you should have the same, uh, you know. It, and honestly, some goals just don't match up. Like my goal to travel and get paid to travel, it's not going to match up. So we're going to have to travel on our own dime, which is fine. I don't mind. I mean, it's much better if someone pays me to travel. I'd rather, I'd rather be paid to travel than to use my own money to travel. If someone wants to pay me to travel, I am all over that all day long. You know, like filming that, that TV show I filmed uh, back in the summer. They, I was getting paid to travel. I loved it. It was awesome. It was the most beautiful thing ever. I didn't have any worries. I didn't worry about getting fed. They fed me. I didn't worry about having to get to my location because they got me to my location. All that stuff. That is the dream, my dream, not my wife's dream. Now, could I finagle it to be my wife's dream? Possibly. It just has to be beneficial for her, and it needs to it needs to include what she wants. So that's what. It, so I, if I can, so that's the that's the connection between the two. But now, I mean, so if you're not happy in your marriage because you've lo- you felt you've lost your individuality, find your individuality, and it's not because you want to be single. And yes, there, there can be rough spots in a marriage and you feel like that you're not being fulfilled because you're missing out on some stuff. Bring that stuff into your life. Plain and simple. If you dropped, if you got rid of some good stuff, if you're, the good stuff you had in your single life, why couldn't you have it in your, uh, in your married life? Simple and easy. Now, if sleeping around is one, what you consider one of those good things, then no, you don't need to be bringing that into your married life because that's just going, that, that sets yourself up for failure. You're going to, that's going to whatever. But yeah. That's what you got to do. You deserve it. It, it, I require it. It's part of the things of of, to being happy. You got to do it that way. Hey, Devin. Hey, Devin. I have a great group of friends, a social life and rarely, and, and I'm rarely alone, but somehow I still feel lonely. It's hard to explain because I'm not isolated, but when I'm with people, but when I'm with people, it feels like there's a distance between us. I find myself going through the motions of hanging out, but inside I feel disconnected. Like I'm not truly seen or truly understood by anyone. How do I feel so lonely when I'm surrounded by people who care about me? Is this 
so is there something wrong with me or is there more to it so this this so your 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 um email to me it hit, it's hitting home okay this is something that I can honestly feel like that my oldest son is going through. He has a great group of friends. He makes amazing money in his job. He's lonely and he lashes out and he takes, takes that loneliness and he turns it into anger and he and is pushing it towards uh, his mom and I. You just, you, you, I, honestly, as my dad said it, I'm going to say it, as my dad said it, this is, I believe this to be true. And I've lost viewers, I've lost subscribers because I've said this, but I don't care because sometimes the truth hurts. As my dad said it, he needs he needs Jesus. He really. If you feel an emptiness inside and you and even though you have all the great things going around you, you're missing something. And that's probably a connection with your Heavenly Father. Plain and simple. And, and of course, people are like, well, don't, we didn't want to take this all religious. I mean, I'm not trying to make this religious, but I'm telling you, when you know something and you believe in something that's greater than you, it literally will bring you some happiness that you've never felt before. That's true. I don't care what anyone says. That is true. So many people out there pretend to live these lives and they're grouchy and they're upset, but, but they, they, they're missing out. Sure, money can. They're like money doesn't buy happiness, or money can bring money doesn't buy money can bring happiness, but it's the wrong kind of happiness. It can buy you stuff that can help give you happy for a little bit, but you, you what you were looking for is the long term. You need the long term happiness, and part of that is once you realize, once you get a, get that relationship with your heavenly Father, then you can know what you should do to help people which can bring you more fulfilling happiness because you're learning to serve others. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. I see this so much and I've been called delusional. I've been called every name in the book you can think of, but the reality is it doesn't matter. If you want happiness, you'll figure it out. And it comes from part of, part of it comes from that. Part of it comes from believing in something that is greater than you. Plain and simple. We've all been there. I've been there. I went through it when I was a teenager. All my friends did a bunch of stupid stuff. I was the DD for every one of my friends that were underage drinking and, you know, or just doing plain old stupid crap. A lot of my friends went to jail. A lot of my, some of my friends became the jailers. Yeah, weird dynamic. I mean, it, it, in general, I mean, it, it's a, uh, you know, and I, I would, you know, I DJ'd, I did all this cool stuff as a, as a teenager. I, you know, I did stupid things. I did awesome things. I did a lot of stuff. Even in my tw ten, my twenties and thirties, you know, I was raising kids most of all that, but I still did, you know, I, st you can, but when it all came down to it, once I honed in on the things that mattered the most and what, the, and like I'm telling you, that brings in the fulfilling, it, it, it will be better. Having a family raising that family serving our my heavenly father doing all those things will bring the happiness and i'm not saying that my plan will work for you but it's worth a shot right it's worth a shot should be done could be done i think i think that's probably the biggest problem we have in our country is is the decline in any type of uh, of um belief in god because I think people, well, people always want to just do what they want to do. They don't want to feel like their their life has limitations. And so they think, well, if I believe in God, then that means I got limitations on me because then God, God's got these commandments we got to live by and blah, 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 blah. Most people live by those those commandments anyway. Why do you think the golden rule is the golden rules? Because they, they're like, okay, this came out of, the, the, of, of this book of uh, scripture, but we don't want to say it's that. So we're going to change it and turn it into this, call it the golden rule. And we'll live by that. It's, it's biblical. It's scriptural. You can't change that. So I'm sorry you're lonely, but that's where you got to go. That that's, that's the thing that you need to do. My opinion. 
Now, again, don't have to believe me. Don't have to follow my, my advice. I'm just a dad giving advice. All I am. All you got to do is reach out and find it. You deserve happiness. You deserve to be more fulfilled. You got to find that. Try it my way. And if it's wrong and it doesn't work for you. And honestly, most people say, well, I tried it for a day. It didn't work. This is one of those things you got to try for a little bit longer than a day. Give, I'd say give yourself two years. If you lived it and you followed it for two years and it doesn't work, okay, I was wrong. I know that's a long-time commitment. That's a long-term commitment. But, you know, it's like anything. Anything worthwhile doing is worthwhile doing and it's doing it for a long time. And, and honestly, it takes a while to do the things that are worthwhile. Plain and simple. So, I don't know. That's my opinion. Anyway. I just want to tell you guys thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you for everything that you've done. Seriously, you 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 ha- you allow me to do this and talk to you and and give it give my my own advice, good, bad, or whatever you want it to be. It's advice, and the reality is is it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I I thank you and uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for commenting and thank you for the emails. Keep sending them. Um, call and give a voicemail. Voicemails are great. I love them, and I'll play the voicemails if you ever want to play want the voicemail played. You want to hear your voice on air? Do it. Number is six one five. 624-4141. Give it that a call anytime. And I appreciate it. You guys take it easy. Be safe out there. Seriously, be safe.